Hi, Ray. Kurt Zepp here. So I follow a lot of astrophotography social media sites. And lately I've been seeing a lot of these posts, mainly from new people. And they're posting these images and they have some weird artifacts on their captures. And, then, you know, they want to know what they are. Let me show you. Okay, I, get, I just got done doing a, an object. And you can see this is what they're talking about. They show something like that. And they'll show another one over here. There's actually a faint one here. Okay, so most of you guys know that those are caused by little dust particles. I call them dust bunnies. And if you're new to astrophotography, don't be worried. They're just little dust particles that get on your sensor or the glass plate above your sensor or possibly on a field flat or something like that. You can't really avoid it. So that doesn't mean you need to take your thing apart and try to clean it. Uh, don't do that. You don't, you don't really need to unless it gets really bad. Uh, but yeah, it's just dust that gets on there. Now, it's real easy to process those things out, and that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how I do it. But it's possible not even to have them show up at all with a good set of flats. Now, if this video is not about making flats. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of videos on that. I'll post a couple links on how to make some flats. Uh, what a flat is, is a flat frame basically is, and every photographer knows this, when you take an image, it's brighter in the center and it gets less bright on the outside. So what you do is you take a, an image on a neutral background and then you have that, uh, and that's your flat, and you can subtract it out of your final image. And what you have is a flat and field where it's the same brightness all the way across the field. And that's what a flat does. And in astrophotography, it has another benefit. Astrophotography is done in low light conditions, and in low light conditions, you see dust particles. You don't see that if it's really bright. So a normal photographer, you, you're not going to see little dust particles on your image. But for astrophotography, you do, as we just saw on the screen there. Now, why didn't... Now, here I'm a seasoned astrophotography, so I made flats. Shouldn't they have removed it? Well, ideally, you're supposed to do flats right after an imaging session. And some of us get lazy and don't do them all the time. You know, some flats are kind of old, you know, like uh, you know, a couple of months on my case. Uh, so um, what happened is uh, some dust got on my sensor from the time I made the flats to when I collected the image. So it didn't remove those flats. And so I have to, I'm going to have to remove them. So it's not like all that images, all the images that I went, all the imaging session, it's not like that's garbage now. It's still a good image. I, I just have to remove the little, those little dust particles uh, of when I do in processing. Obviously, if you have a good set of flats, you won't have to worry about that. But, oh well. So that's what I want to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how I get rid of them. Now, there are numerous ways to get rid of these. Uh, though they're, they're real easy to get rid of, laughably easy. Uh, I'm going to use Photoshop to remove them. I use PixInsight and Photoshop during my processing. It's probably possible. I'm, pretty, I'm fairly sure it's possible to do it all in PixInsight. Uh, I don't know it. I'm not that good with PixInsight. I'm, I'm pretty good with PixInsight, but not that good. There are some other experts on PixInsight that know how to do this. Um, Adam Block is uh, the guru of PixInsight. Another really good source for Pix Insight stuff is Sean Nielsen over at Visible Dark Astro. He's got a ton of videos on Pix Insight. He's a dynamite uh, with Pix Insight. And another good one is uh, Quee the Lazy Geek. Um, those are just a few of the people that I know that are Pix Insight experts. But there's a whole slew of other people out there. But anyways, I'll show you my way. It's probably not the best, but it works for me. I'm Kurt Zepatello, and you're watching Astro Quest One. Okay, folks. Well, here I am. So this is my image. It's the NGC 5364 Galaxy Group. And let me highlight it. This is the luminosity, luminosity channel right after I stacked it. And you can see the, uh, the blemishes that I will fix. Now, the first thing I did on all the images, the LRGB, was a cropped it a slight amount and after I cropped it I wound up with this 
And so here's what it looks like cropped, and here's the red cropped. You'll see it looks very similar, the green, and finally the blue. So all of them have been cropped a slight amount. And the next step, of course, is to do the background extraction. Now, in this case, I actually used automatic background extraction. I usually try dynamic and back, um, automatic. And in this case, the automatic was just fine. And after I did it, you can see it came out very, very flat. And you can see the blemishes here, one here, one here, one here, and there's a slight one up here. You can barely see it. So let me, that was luminosity. Here's the red, here's the green, and finally, here's the blue. Okay, uh, next uh, was to use BTX, Blur Exterminator on all these. That's a, I'm, there's tons of videos on that now. That's a new feature that's in PixInsight, done by Russell Croman. Absolutely wonderful program, a yeah, wonderful addition to PixInsight. And this is what I wound up with. Again, the stars are much smaller. Some of the noise has been reduced. It just does a fabulous job. And Blur Exterminator also must be done in the linear stage, or should be done in, I can do it other places, but it works best in the linear stage. So I'm still in the linear stage. And now the next step was I wanted to, as I said, I wanted to remove these blemishes here. And I do that in Photoshop, and in order to bring it into Photoshop, I've got to take it out of linear stage, and I've got to, um, and I've got to use, and I've got to turn it into a nonlinear uh, format. And to do that, what I use is a script over here, the Easy Processing script. I use Soft Stretch in order to do that. Now it's. <laughs> Um, I use soft stretch. Some people will use other different means of getting it into into nonlinear stage. I use soft stretch. I'm it's really simple. It's easy, uh, and I, I admit I am lazy when it comes to certain processing things like Queeve, and I learned this from Queeve. And the one good thing about using easy soft stretch is it actually equalizes all of these channels. So they're the same brightness. So you don't have to mess around with that in a later later point. So it, it automatically does that if you use the easy stretch on all your images. So that's one of the good benefits of it. Yes, there's probably other ways of making it nonlinear that might work even better, but that's the one I use. So let's take a look at what the nonlinear images look like. And there's the luminosity. Here's the red. Here's the green. And finally, here's the blue. Now you'll notice something funny here. If you look on the blue one, you'll only see it on this side. The, the, you'll, you'll see a spot here. And I know it's, you're probably having difficulty seeing one here, but there is one there. But you don't see any on this side. And again, with the green, you see one here and a really faint one here. And you don't see any on this side. But now on the red, you see one here, a faint one here. You see another one here. And there is a yeah, there's sort of a faint one here if you really look. But you'll notice something. You'll notice it looks really peculiar in the fact that it looks the same distance from here as this one does from here, and it looks the same distance from the bottom as this one is from the top. And if we look at the luminosity, it really, same. this one's really bright here, but it's also, again, the same distance here, the same distance here. Same distance here, same distance here, but if we match it up to these ones, you'll see another one here to here and one here to here. So what gives, well, what gives is I took it on both sides of the meridian. I collected data when I was doing luminosity on both sides of the meridian when I was doing the luminosity and the red. But when I was doing the green, I was only on one side of the meridian. So that tells me that somehow the flats aren't reoriented or they're not lined up. And maybe I should realize that and and only stack half, only stack the one side of the meridian with those flats and then do the other side or something like that. I don't know. Whatever the case, I thought that was pretty interesting. And as I said, those spots are laughably easy to fix. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do it. 
Okay, I'm going to use Photoshop to do that. So now that these are in nonlinear form, I made them into a TIFF file. I saved them as a TIFF file rather than the uh, XISF, which is the native PixInsight formula. So let's go to Photoshop now. Everyone, I'm back. I forgot. Once you know it, I forgot to do one thing. I next would take this and make use Star Exterminator, Russell Crowman's Star Exterminator, another great program. And I would run it onto the uh, to the image, and it gives me a starless version as well as just the stars for later recombination. So, anyways, I'm going to take this starless version, and that's where I'm going to get rid of this blemish here. Okay, folks, I am in Photoshop now, and this is my luminosity. And here's the blemishes that I'm going to remove right here, right here, right here. And there's a faint one right up here that you really can't see, but I can see it. And all I do is click here and maximize it. And voila, it's gone. Now, what did I do? How did I get rid of it? Well, well you can see what I what I just did. Uh, the, the best way to do it, or the way... I, I, I did it was I would create a layer over here and then I would do this one at a time I would take this selector and I'd make sure this is somewhere around either 10 or 20 I think I was using 20 when I did this originally and actually I would scroll up here a little bit more just make it bigger Ooh, not that big and like that maybe something like that and then I would scroll around the edge of it sort of like that and I would press this button down here and then what you could do, you can do several different things, but what I did is I did an adjustment with curves and all you have to do is just look at that. Now, you know, you can make it a little bit, this one's actually a little bit tougher to do here, but uh, it's good. And all you're really trying to do basically is make it so it's the same level as this background, if you know if that makes any sense. Now that's about the same level, although it's got some little more darkened parts there. What you can do to fix that is, I will show you. First off, I will make this one level, I'll merge it. I'll put another down here. What you can do is you can actually just put a little clone stamp right there for that little bit. Uh, here's a clone stamp right here. And what do I got for it? Hardness size, you know, right there. That's good. And you can just put a little clone stamp right around that. And I'm just doing a real quick job, but you know you might want to do a better job than I'm just doing it. Okay, and voila! So that one's taken care of. And we, I, what I do, what I do next. I mean, I you know, you can have other other ways of doing it. And then I would go to the next one from down here. This one I might be so good as. To you know, the better that you draw your circle, the less you'll have to use a, a clone stamp on it. Again, I will just do the adjustment and do a curve. That's, look at that. That's pretty dang good right there. I almost don't even need to do the clone stamp on this one. But I will, just for to show you that it can be done. I'll come up here to clone stamp. I really can't even see it. I guess it is. There it is. All done. And I would do the same thing to this one. I guess I'll... I'll do it. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, zip this one done. And again with the curves. There we go. Look at that. And we'll make a flatten that out. And the last one up here. I know you guys can barely see this last one up here. So I'm not even going to bother with a clone stamp right there. I don't even really see it. Again, I'm doing it real quickly. Levels. Oops, not levels. You could do it with levels, actually, if you wanted, but uh, I was using curves. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's it. Okay. Very good. And I would come over here to layer, flatten it out, and then I would just save it to some other name. I would call it, like, Starless 1, and I would wind up with this. And that's what I, that's exactly what I did. And I did the same thing with the blue, the green, and the red. And then what I would do is I would bring it back into Fix Insight and do my additional processing. Now, there may be a tendency for new people in this. If you just had your original 
crop, oops, I took it away. Let me see. If you're new to this type sort of thing, there might be a tendency to, uh, for beginners, and I used to do this too, what you would do is you would just uh, come over here and come to some process and just like darken the background there until it goes away, you know, and going, oh, wow, there it is. Uh, but then you're like clipping a lot of the data. So that's not really a great way to do, <laughs> to do it. Which What you want to do, which is what I did, was I equalized the blemish to the background and any minor perturbations, yeah, they'll get, you can darken them out, but you want to get a, equalized as best as possible before you do any of that other stuff. Okay, folks, I figured I'd give you a little bonus and show you what else I do uh, quickly. So uh, here is my starless image after I fixed it. And here's the stars. What I would do is I would use pixel math, open that up. And uh, the way I would do is I'd use the expression editor and I would take the starless and just simply add it to the stars, whether add the stars to it, press OK, get on here to destination. I press create new image. And I'm going to keep it the same as the target, which is a, a grade, a, a mono image. And when I did that, I would just, you know, just press this button right here. And it does it, and voila, you get this. All right, I've already done this already. And my next step, what I would do with that, is I would come over here and I would use, and I don't know if I have it on this computer, but I would use Russell Crowman's Noise Exterminator. And yeah, I don't have it on this computer. I have it on my other computer that I did the processing with. But nonetheless, it's another one of Russell Croman's programs. Absolutely wonderful. And when I did Noise Exterminator, I wound up getting uh, this. You see, it took away all the background noise, but I kept a lot of the detail in here. So the detail of the galaxy, and it made the stars really smooth them out. And it got rid of a lot of his background noise. So that was Noise Exterminator, and I pixel math to combine the images. I did that with the RGB as well. And what I did then was I took that blue, green, and red, and I used panel combination on it. So I put the red in the red channel like this. Red. I guess I'll demonstrate it for you. The green and the green. And of course, the blue and the blue. And when I ran it, I wound up getting this for my RGB image. It looks pretty good to me. Okay, and then what I did was I went over here into, well, I went in the process and did an LRGB combination. Okay, and these were highlighted right here, the red, green, and blue, but I just de-highlighted them. And I just put the luminosity in here and make sure I get the right one. Oh, there it is, working one. Nope, this one, here it is. Good grief. So I put the luminosity in here and I had my RGB image already here and I just moved this thing over here and it produced this final RGB image, which is what I got right here. And that's about it, folks. This looks pretty good right here. However, what I did now is I brought it back in uh, Photoshop and I did a whole bunch of other, well, not a whole bunch. I did some more minor tweaks on this and wound up producing my final image, which looked like this. Okay, folks, well, that's all I have for you. If you're new to astrophotography, keep up the good work. I know it can be frustrating at times, but it's a very worthwhile hobby. And we'll see you next time.